Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AED744. So today, guys, we'll be doing our AFCON review of Groups A and Group B. My goodness me, man. The games today were absolutely thrilling. I, we have a lot to discuss. So if you're new out here, consider that like button, hit the subscribe button. Guys, and recently I've noticed that we haven't really been hitting a like target in the last couple of videos. So it's been really disappointing. So I hope you guys can start to get in that habit, guys. Because like I so said, guys, I've been putting so much time in my life, you know, watching all these games, watch the highlights, you know. Taking so much of my life to, you know, make these kind of videos. And it really does mean a lot when you guys take that time out of your life to, you know, comment on the videos. And, like, that's uh, that's always greatly appreciated. Anyways, enough introductions. We're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the game we just got here is Guinea-Bissau nil, Nigeria 1. Uh, let's, let me just say this right now. Nigeria is looking good. I think Nigeria have a game plan. And I think this team is now finding its groove. But... This team still needs more up top. And I think Victor Osman has to perform. Because if Victor Osman doesn't perform for Nigeria and the AFCON, Nigeria is not going far. Victor Osman is going to have to guide this Nigeria team. Because when I look at the players that they have for the attack, I'm sorry, I don't think Chukwizi is going to be clinical enough. Simon, I don't think it's going to be clinical enough. It's for Victor Osman. And you look at the chance that Victor Osman had on the day. He should have buried some of those chances. Those chances he had on the day, was he should have been scored. And my thing is that you can only criticize a striker when they're not converting their chances. You cannot criticize a striker if there's no chances. And for me, the chances are there with Victor Osman. So really, there is no excuses. For Nigeria, in my opinion, it's defense assault. I think Calvin Bassi and Ayi have been rock solid at the back. I think these guys have been so solid defensively. And I'm really, really impressed with how good they are. Because coming into this tournament, there was a lot of talk that Nigeria's midfield is so bad. Defense is really bad. But I think now I actually figured out the real issue with this team. This team doesn't have any elite boat goal scorers. That's the problem with this team. That's the real problem with this team. And the problem is, I just feel like for Nigeria, they need to get Victor Osman to be in this clinical form. Because like I said, guys, if Victor Osman isn't clinical, Nigeria is not going far in this tournament. Because in my opinion, for Nigeria to win this tournament, they're going to have to 1-0 their way through. As for Guinea-Bissau, there isn't really a whole lot to discuss from them because they were already eliminated because of heads ahead. And it was just it was just tough for them. They had they had their moments here and there. I think they had a goal disallowed in the second half, if I remember correctly. Nabil Nabeli, I thought was great in goal. He made some good saves on the day, and he's much better than Zahu. He's considerably better than him. So I just think for Nigeria, man, they gotta improve, man. They gotta improve. And the only goal in the game came from their center back. A really, really good finish on the center back, Sangate. But yeah, other than that, for Nigeria, man, it was just really, really disappointing. They were should have been better in the final third. They missed, so, they spurned so many chances. And you look at the map, you look at this, the heat map and stats in general. Look at how, look how bad Nigeria were defensively. Well, I mean, look how many shots shots on target they had. Only one shot on target is really, really bad. They had some disallowed goals, I believe, um, but I believe it was the right decision. And so for Nigeria, man, they have to improve considerably if they want to win this tournament. But this is a good start. They finished second in the group, which we I expected them to finish second. A lot of people saying they might finish third. I even saw some people put them first. But um, they got, they ended up finishing second place. And so kudos to Nigeria. But a lot needs to change if they want to win this tournament. Moving on. We got Ecuador Guinea versus Ivory Coast. <laughs> I still can't believe this flipping happened. I still refuse to believe this happened. Because my goodness me, man, I put a lot of stocks. I put a lot of stocks in the Ivory Coast. I was praising them so much on my predictions. I even said this is a team to win the Afcon, and for them to deliver a stinker like this against Ecuador Guinea at home is quite shocking. And the fact they can see the four goals is unbelievable. So let me just start and let me just start with the lineup first. Why the heck is Nicolas Pepe playing at striker? I need explanations because this guy, I'm sorry, is, is terrible. He shouldn't even be as a striker. I wouldn't even have called him up. I, I'm going to go as far as saying that. He shouldn't have even been called up. And you could see that this Ivory Coast team, they lacked that finisher. They really did lack that finisher. And I just don't understand why he didn't start like Kosano. Kosano, I believe, scored in the opening game against Guinea-Bissau. Why didn't he start? You know, And I understand Sebastian Howler is out. But what's the point of calling him? For the tournament, if he was not going to play at all, did they not know this? I mean, maybe the injury got worse than expected, but still, like Sebastian Holland was a big miss, you know. But yeah, I mean, for Ivory Coast, man, this is still a stacked team. Like everything else besides a striker, you have your your guys like Kwame is there, Diakata is there. Um, you know, your midfield assault, Sangare, Kessi Fofana, 
as a single bullies Nindika, conan fafana like this is a good solid team in general it's just a striker they didn't have but you got to give credit to equity guinea equity guinea came with a great game plan the game plan was to play in a low block force ivory coast to play out wide and hit them on the counter attack and boy oh boy did they did that because because when you look at this when you look at the stats and you look at the score it's kind of misleading you have to look at the stats to really truly understand this game because if you look at this game, Ivory Coast tried everything. They had 22 shots, three on target. You can see how poor they were in the final third. 2.21 X XG, and they also had 68% possession. But you look at Exo Guinea. They had 10 shots, seven on target, 32% possession. You see, this is what I love about the stats. The stats is that ball, for me, the stats is more important than your possession. You know, it's a matter of what you do with the ball. It doesn't matter how much of the ball you have. It's a matter of what you do with the ball. And you could see how. Equatorian were clinical in the day. They had they had three big chances. They didn't miss any of the big chances, whereas Ivory Coast did. There were several plenty of opportunities where Ivory Coast could have got back in the game. You know, and I think for Equatorial Guinea, man, scoring right before almost before halftime really, really threw off Ivory Coast's now because they have to throw the kitchen sink, you know. And they almost did. Sangari, I believe, scored a great goal. It was unfortunately disallowed. And then that and then Noso, man. That Noso guy is is unbelievable. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name. I'm not sure how you pronounce, but I think it's really no so. New out, new out, you know, I think it's new out actually. But yeah, and then that second goal, man, what a free kick that was from Garn Gannett, man. What a free kick that was. And I believe Ivory Coast did have a disallowed goal in the second half, if I remember correctly. Um, and it was chalked off. And then the third goal, man, beautiful counter attack from Neo. Once again, another really, really good pass there on um, the goal right there. And he was just unbelievable. I think Machine got the assist there for that goal. And then, um, obviously, the, if the finished off, man, Buila Sam finishes off to make it 4-0. And so for, for Ivory Coast, man, um, they still have a chance to qualify for the round of 16, but it's not really in their hands. They have to basically rely on other teams, and it's going to come down to the goal difference, I imagine, because Ghana is pretty much out. Ghana and, I believe, Zambia. Now, it depends if Zambia can get something against Morocco. If Zambia can get something against Morocco, then it's really, really bad for them. So they have to hope that Morocco beats Zambia. So for Ivory Coast, man, it's really, really tired for them because now they have to rely on other teams to do them a favor. And yeah, Fofana obviously was like, you could kind of argue as a fault for the fourth goal uh, because he palmed in the straight of Sam and Sam scored the rebound. But yeah, I mean, my thing with uh, extra guineas is that this is a good salt. This is a team that you don't want to play against the knockout stage because this team, when you give them so much space and behind, they're going to threat you. They're going to punish you off. And you know what's funny? Because coming into this tournament, I was saying that this team is a good, solid team, but they don't score enough goals. They are proving me wrong massively by saying, hey, Arpon, we heard what you said, and we're going to prove you wrong. And I think they probably did that. So shout out to Guinea, man. A fantastic, fantastic 4-0 win. And for the Ivory Coast, man, a lot needs to improve if they're going to make the next round. Because for me, it's looking really bleak for them. And, you know, it was, this was kind of giving me 7-1 vibes from the Brazil-Germany game. And this is the first time in a long time that an AFCON host has got embarrassed. I don't think I've ever seen an AFCON host get embarrassed like this ever in AFCON history. So this is an incredible scenes for Ivory Coast Guinea. And shout out to them, man. For Ivory Coast, man, their next, I guess their next ambition is to qualify for the World Cup. They better top that group. I completely forgot which group of the Ivory Coast is in the qualifiers, but they have to qualify for the World Cup, basically. Otherwise, it's a, ter it's a failure. It's a big, big failure. But anyways, I think we talked about enough with Ivory Coast. We're going to go on to talk about... Cape Verde 2, Egypt 2. Uh, let me just say this right now. Egypt, for me, is playing beautiful football. This is a great Egypt team. Egypt, you have to give them char character. Because, my goodness me, Egypt were so good in terms of their attacking play. Defensively, they're very bad. And we, I think we were talking about this yesterday's stream. They were so bad defensively. Tavares scored that goal right before halftime, putting Egypt on the brink of elimination. And you have to give credit to Egypt. They responded at halftime, and the players stood up like Trezeguet. That was a really good substitution um, from Rio Vitoria. Bringing Trezeguet on, scored a fantastic goal. Fantastic goal, you know? And then from that point on, Egypt kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And then they finally got the breakthrough goal in the 93rd minute. Mohamed scoring that great goal. You could argue that Vizarro could have done better in goal because he, I feel like he went off a bit too early off his line. But, you know, it is what it is. He got celebrated like crazy. And then Texera came off the bench, scored the equalizer. El Shirai 
He made it. El Shenawi made a mistake there. Palm did and back on the rebound, and Texera made the two all. For Egypt, man, they played really well in this game. You have to give them that credit, but Egypt have to do better defensively. Defensively, these guys were horrendous. Defensively, they were very, very bad, and they're going to have to improve significantly because this free-flowing attacking football is pretty and all, but it doesn't matter about prettiness. It's about winning it. And for Egypt, man, for their standards, they have to win the AFCON. Anything less than an AFCON dub is a failure. It's a failure. For a nation that is the most successful nation in AFCON history, if they don't win it, it's a failure. You know, And it's tarnishes Salah's legacy as well. And you have to give credit. This Egypt team... Now, I've heard some people say Egypt played better without Salah. And that's easy to say, given what they've done in the group stage. But remember, guys, we have to keep context in consideration. This is a Cape Verde team that are playing their B team because they had already basically topped the group. A lot of these players don't even play... Uh, I, many of these guys are probably not going to play in the knockout stage. You know, maybe the likes of, you know, Vizona will play. Obviously, you have um, Montaro, who's one of their players, and then you got Bebe, of course. But I think for um, Cape Verde, this is a solid team. This is a team that um, knows how to take advantage. They're very, really, really well organized, and they're tough to beat. They're really tough to beat. And you have to give credit to this Egypt team. This Egypt team, they fought, they, they fought, they pushed, and they had so much character in this game, you know? But Egypt, man, they're very lucky that Ghana didn't win. Because if Ghana did win, oh, they would have in trouble. They would have been in trouble with three points and a zero goal difference. So they have to thank Mozambique. So Mozambique, so Egypt fans, you better be thinking of Mozambique because Mozambique saved you guys. Mozambique saved you guys. But like I said, Egypt had to improve defensively if they want to win this tournament. And now to the final game. The final game, guys. Ghana, you did it again. You did it again, Ghana. I don't know what to say about this Ghana team because this Ghana team for me is just perennial, perennial losers because I'm sorry. How do you have a tuna lead? You can't hold on to five minutes against Mozambique. I'm sorry. This is disgraceful. from Ghana. This is absolutely disgraceful. And credit to Mozambique. I thought Mozambique were fantastic in the day, even though they didn't, they scored the goals pretty late on. You look at the stats in general, look at possession, and everything. They dictated the game. They dominated the game. They had 12 shots. They had 61% possession, and they were the much better team for, throughout the course of the game. It's just that they made some clumsy mistakes, which is why Ghana were in a great, comfortable position. But if you look at the second half in particular, look how good they were in the second half. They thoroughly dominated. Ghana were terrible in the second half. You know, they had to make chance after chance. So let's start with the first goal. Very, very clumsy foul from Naore. I believe he trips down Payne still, I believe. And obviously, Jordan Ayu steps up and scores a penalty to make it 1-0. Then the second half, Another clumsy mistake. Another clumsy mistake. I believe Kudos gets taken down at um, upstep on uh, jo Jordan Ayu, and he scores again. But you could see that Ghana were holding on. Ghana were holding on. And then Andre Ayu gives a stupid handball away inside the box. Upstep their guy, and he scores. Contambo. And then Rendildo, man. Alfori, man. You, uh, you, I'm sorry. We got to talk about Alfori. Alfori, basically, it was out for a goal kick, but because he touched the ball, it went out for a corner. And from that resulting corner, Renildo scored. So basically, Ghana basically went out the group stage. Because, well, here's the thing, guys. Ghana are most likely out. Technically, there is still a mathematical chance they could still make it through, but it's very difficult because now they're on two points and you're going to have to. Re it's really bad. It's really, really bad because two points is generally not enough. We see historically teams only make it through with at least three points. You need at least three points to even have a chance. When you finish below three points, it's really, really dicey. It's really dicey. You're going to have to be extremely lucky. As well as the fact, I believe Ghana is on a minus one goal difference. So that's not even helping their case that much. So it maybe if they're in a zero or a plus one, maybe there would be a chance. But man, you can see that Ghana, for me, man, they just they just lack coaching. Chris Hewton, man, we've got to ask a lot of questions of you. Because how do you have your team make so many individual mistakes so much in this tournament? Because all the goals that Ghana have conceded have been ter basically errors. Errors made by the players. They made errors against Egypt. They made error against Cape Verde. They made errors in this game against Mozambique. And that's just embarrassing for Ghana. So it's, things have to change. We can't see the Ayu brothers anymore. And you can see without the kudos, this team really doesn't have any lifeline, any spine in them. Because even though Ayu scored the penalties today, besides the penalties, I thought he was pretty poor. You know? And let's be real, guys. Ghana, for most of this game, didn't really create any great goal-scoring opportunities besides the penalties. If you really deep it, guys. If you really deep it. So, my thing is that I think for Ghana, a lot of things need to change. They got to, Some of those guys that 
made those clumsy mistakes shouldn't be in the national team anymore. Like, I don't know why Afori is a goalkeeper. It should have been uh, uh, Lorenz Altzegi. Yeah, yeah, it should have been that goalkeeper. I believe he played in the World Cup. Then obviously, you oh, you could also start Joseph Wolokot, you know? And the Ayub brothers simply cannot be in the national team anymore. Just simple as that. And you have to give kudos to this license of freedom. And unfortunately, kudos didn't really have a great game against Mozambique. Anyways, um, I'm pretty exhausted. That was a pretty eventful day in the AFCON. I hope you guys did enjoy this, you know, little bit of um, this review of the AFCON. Remember, guys, we'll do a comprehensive review on Wednesday. And, of course, we'll have a good friend of mine, uh, Matt's, help me break down this AFCON tournament. And um, it's going to be very interesting, guys. So I hope you, we can, hope you guys do enjoy this. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe if you made it this far. And comment down below, guys. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I want to know if you made it all the way by commenting hashtag AFCON. And remember, guys, to become a member of the channel, the guys who's members of videos and member streams, it's only a dollar per month. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.